Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Top 5 Total War video. This time I'm covering the Top 5 Removed Features from a Total War game. Don't think we need any further explanation than that, so let's move on to the number 5 spot. Only a fool cares for omens and Coming in at number 5 is the cinematic general speeches that were present in Rome 1, Medieval 2, and Shogun 2. Now, Total War Attila and Rome 2 do have general speeches, but they're not cinematic, they're not dynamic, and they're very dull. Total War Warhammer does have some general speeches, but they only occur during quest battles, and they might occur one out of 200 battles, essentially. So they're not very, uh, they're not very common in that game. Now, what I'm referring to is the fact that in Rome 1, Medieval 2, and Shogun 2, pretty much every single battle could have a general speech. And they could range from just a couple of words to a couple of minutes of talking about the enemy conditions. It was very much conditional based. Depending on the enemy you were going up against, what kind of army composition they had, how many troops they had, how many troops you had, would all affect what the general spoke about. Even the uh, even the traits that your general would have would affect what they said, from being, you know, good speaker, bad speaker. But the main one I want to talk about is the one feck. Now, if you see my general speech video, that was pretty much based off that particular trait and trying to get as many of the conversations going from from that from that trait. Now, what that trait does if they have it, it basically means that they're vulgar, in that you go into battle and they'll have vulgar insults towards their enemy, and some of them are hilarious, especially considering they managed to keep it, you know, not using particularly vulgar language like shit, funk, and so on. I remember the first time I heard my English general with the trait feck insult his Scottish enemy, and I found it so funny that I actually exited out of the battle after the speech reloaded the save file so that I could fight the battle again so that I could hear him say the exact same thing again. It was something that I really appreciated in the older Total War games that I miss in the newer Total War games. It doesn't have that level of dynamic speech. Even the Total War Warhammer speeches, they are pre-scripted, they're not dynamic. It's just based on the, uh, on the particular quest battle. Now in Shogun 2, it's less dynamic because there it's not as deep of a game because there's not as many you know, different cultures or traits that are available. But the great thing about these speeches was that they were actually spoken in Japanese. And I think it's the only Total War game that does that. If you compare it to Medieval 2, when you're playing as the French, they still speak in English, with, but with a French accent. Same with all the other cultures. So that it kind of feels a little bit out of place sometimes. It's not that big of a deal, but it's just something. Now, dynamic cinematic speeches is certainly something that I would like to see in future Total War games. I believe that Three Kingdoms will have some semblance of general speeches, but I'm not entirely sure at this stage. Anyway, let's now move on to the number four pick. Coming in at number four are the enemy agent, sorry, agent cutscenes. So when you send your agent off to do any particular mission, you'll get a cutscene. And the outcome of the action will be shown dynamically in the cutscene. So in this particular situation, he tried to assassinate the Pope. He had a very low chance of success, so naturally he failed. But in addition to success and failure, there's also the chance of getting away as opposed to being caught. If they get caught, they get killed. And it's all shown in the cinematic. And sometimes... There are variations of cinematics based on doing the exact same thing. So you won't always get the exact same movie. Now, in this particular case here, the spy is trying to get inside the city. Now, if we had tried to get into a Middle Eastern city, it would have looked like a Middle Eastern city. So the guard have a looks, has a look. He may or may not succeed here. Looks like he's taking notice. And there goes my spy. Now I believe that this is a feature that was present in Shogun 1, Medieval 2, and Shogun 2. So ninjas are very much the same as assassins with Medieval 2, in that has a chance of success or failure with any given mission. 
if they fail, then there's a chance that they need to get away, just like in this situation here. Now, I personally would like to see this returned in future Total War games. We haven't seen it in a while. It just adds to the immersion of the game. Anyway, let's now move on to number three. Coming in at number three is something that was only present in Total War Shogun 2, and it was a multiplayer feature. Now, Total War is not very well known for its you know, dynamic multiplayer, but in Shogun 2 it had something called Avatar Conquest, and it's the only Total War game that has anything like this. So in Avatar Conquest, you basically set up your avatar, your basically you, and you set up his retainers and traits as he levels up. So as you can see with here, I've uh, ranked up to, what was it, 7 or 8, but there's another retainer that I could potentially have at rank 10. So you can see, as we continue to play through the Avatar Conquest, you get new retainers. So I can have at the moment a max of 4. From here as well, you can set up your army management, so you don't have to just constantly um, make your army as soon as uh, you're ready for a battle. You can actually pre-make them here. I mean, you could sort of do that in other, other ones with you know saving, um, saving setups. But in addition to that, you could also have veteran units. Units that you've used in a battle that's done well and ranked up. They'll be slightly more expensive than your other units, but you'll be able to customize them a little bit more. I think the main thing with Avatar mode, I didn't use it that much, but I used it a little bit, was that it gave you greater customization. It didn't necessarily mean that the more you play, the more overpowered you got, because as your units got more powerful, they also got more expensive. It was purely a matter of customization. Now, of course, somebody who was rank 10 was just far more likely to beat someone who was rank 1 just because of the amount of experience they had, and also not to mention the, the number of units unlocked. They would actually be able to have a much more dynamic army. So this is something that I would certainly like to see come back in future Total War games, especially in Three Kingdoms. However, I don't think it's coming back. Let's now move on to number two. Coming in at number two is the ability to remove or move units from your army to create a separate force to do a small task. This was available in all Total War games up until Rome 2. So what I'm talking about is if you've got a full stack army and there's something else you want a small force to do, you can take those units, move it over there and make the attack so that you don't have to have an, like an entire force dedicated to taking out a small enemy. Now this was very useful in, for strategic reasons because if you sent a huge army up against a small one, sort of like in this case here, the, uh, the enemy army would run away. Now if, you had sent, if I had sent a smaller force, maybe they would have stood and fought. It depends on what you want to do strategically. Now in this particular case here in Shogun 2, which was the last game which you could do this, I'm moving the majority of my army over to the city because I didn't need the whole thing to do it. I already knew I was going to be more powerful than it. And if I wanted to as well, I could send in those reinforcements afterwards. But since I didn't end up needing it, I didn't waste all of those guys' movement and I could now continue to get him to do something else. So he's going back into that settlement to maintain public order and recover. Now in Rome 2, this is a game where you can't do this. So from Rome 2 onwards, if I select some units and try to try to detach them, you can't do that. Now this is a big problem in these in Rome 2, Attila, Warhammer, because if you've got most of the time your armies will be full stacks, as in 20, 20 units in the army. Now, occasionally you'll go up against enemies that have no territory left, they've just been beaten, but their armies are still there. But they're very small. They might have four or five armies left in a region, and their combined strength is less than a full stack. But you have no ability to, to send a small force to go and deal with them. Instead, you've got to send this big force to go and hit them. And then you go and hit them, and they just run away. And so you get into a, a case of... Just ch ring around the rosy, chase this motherfucker around all over the place, and it can be extremely irritating. And sometimes you just want to send a small force out to just get the job done. Now, the, I think the main reason why they did this is because the Warscape engine has a major movement bug with attaching and detaching enemies, uh, detaching units. Now, rather than fix this bug, Creative Assembly just remove the feature entirely. Now, this is something that is endemic within Creative Assembly. Rather than fixing certain bugs, they tend to remove features entirely. Now, personally, in my my thoughts are, I would much rather the bug be there than the whole feature just be removed. Anyway, with that, let's now move on to the top pick. Coming in at number one is naval battles in a Total War game. Now, naval battles were introduced in Empire Total War, 
and have now been removed as of Total War Warhammer and Total War Three Kingdoms. It's been confirmed that Total War Three Kingdoms will not have naval battles, which I think is a massive shame. Now, in my opinion, Empire, uh, the naval battles had a bit of a sketchy run. They peaked at Empire Total War, Napoleon Total War, and Shogun Total War Fall of the Samurai. Shogun 2, I mean. In Rome 2 and Attila, there were naval battles, but they were badly balanced and quite buggy. Now, again, this is just like in the previous one, rather than improve upon the, the naval battles and fix the bugs, Creative Assembly seemed to just want to just remove it and not have to worry about it. Now, I have a lot of bad things to say about Empire Total War, but in my opinion, the naval battles in Empire Total War, aside from the fact that the, the, the AI is not very good, but the actual the way that naval battles works is fantastic. The way that if your sh if your shots hit the uh, the side of the of the, uh, the of the ship, you can actually visibly see the damage on the ship. Where the individual men on the on the ship, if they get hit, they get killed. You can actually destroy the cannons on the ship. It's far less dynamic in the newer Total War games, but in Empire Total War and Napoleon, I really think that they did a, an amazing job of naval battles. And it's such a shame that we're not going to be seeing them in the foreseeable future. I really do hope that there are plans to reintroduce naval battles in future Total War games, but at this stage here, we, we don't know. It, we might just never see naval battles again. Now, I do want to give a little bit of an honorable mention to another uh, removed feature uh, in that population. I'm sure some uh, people are thinking, why isn't he talking about population? You know, I've been banging on about population literally for years. Now, population was a, a mechanic that I personally loved that was at its peak in Rome 1 and Medieval 2. And it was removed, you know, as of basically Shogun 2. However, in Three Kingdoms, it's likely going to see a comeback. So, I, if I had made this video six months ago, I definitely would have put population up on the top. But... It seems like dynamic population is returning in Three Kingdoms, but I don't know. But I did just want to give it an honorable mention, sort of, or dishonorable mention even. Uh, I absolutely hated the fact that uh, that population was removed, but I am certainly glad to see it coming back. And hopefully we'll see some other of these on the list here return to Total War games in the future, because I believe these are all features that people would like to see in future Total War games. Anyway, with that being said, that's the end of this video. Don't forget to comment and let me know what top 5 video you would like me to do next. Until then, I'll see you next time, fuckers.